thank you for your leadership and to the U.S. Ukraine Foundation for hosting this vital roundtable discussion uh, to discuss the starvation and uh, using starvation and the weaponization of food and famine uh, as one of the cruelest forms of human subjugation uh, and uh, raw torture. Uh, we have this discussion at a very important time in world history. You mentioned the 90th anniversary of dictator Joseph Stalin's uh, forced famine against the people of Ukraine. But I have to say, as an American citizen and representative of just astounding people, I've had the privilege of serving my career, during my career, most Americans have no understanding of the depths of suffering that took place uh, during the period of time uh, that uh, the uh, famine uh, occurred. The um, book Bloodlands by Professor Timothy Snyder, I think is probably the best summary of that. I would encourage people to read it if you have not read it. And for Americans listening to this broadcast, remember most American soldiers never made it east of Berlin during World War II. They had their hands full uh, in Western Europe as well as North Africa and in the Pacific. And so America, and, and during World War II, Stalin, the Stalinist regime was the ally uh, of our country uh, in the fight against Nazism uh, in Europe. But there was a naivete that extended uh, to points east. And though we endured 40 years after that of uh, Soviet repression across many nations that have now become free, uh, that whole history is not well uh, told in our country. And I say to our Ukrainian friends who are joining us, do not underestimate the power of your archives and museums across our country to tell the stories of individual people, of individual Americans who by a miracle survived and could tell the stories of their families. And they are not doing that right now. Uh, they're forgetting that all politics, all uh, uh, diplomacy rests on a history, an understanding of what it is like to live at the edge of liberty. And I think that this is the moment when many of those family stories can be told. And it isn't just a story of what ground the brave Ukrainian soldiers have gained today, but it's your story. It's the story of what happened to your family. And so that many Americans who've been blessed with liberty and uh, don't know the history of that part of the world, this is a moment for enlightenment. So the developments that are occurring today do require more of us in having the courage to tell our stories, to educate the American people on the histories of these policies that are not uh, new to the history of dealing with Russia in that part of the world. Uh, but it's important for the challenges we face in order to win, to support our allies in Ukraine, and to address the humanitarian efforts that will address the issues of rising hunger in many places uh, in the world. So Nadia mentioned the legislation that we were successful in passing uh, to study the 1932 Ukrainian famine and why an American commission was necessary to place on the historical docket uh, the relevant histories uh, of um, what happened and where an estimated 7 million Ukrainians and other ethnic groups living in Ukraine at the time died uh, trying to uh, survive uh, between the years of 1932 and 1933 when the Soviet Union seized grain as it is, it is bombing uh, grain silos in Ukraine today at Odessa and other places, and to suppress at that time a very nationally conscious peasantry movement where people were struggling valiantly to maintain their national identity and resist the collectivization of private property of farms that was occurring. So that massive violation of human rights is one of the world's best kept secrets. And the Soviet Union and the Russian regime now has effectively denied its occurrence and concealed all evidence. And I just say to the modern world, if you look back at the Sochi Olympics and the absolute lie 
that Russia told during those Olympics in the same year that it invaded Ukraine in 2014 uh, to contrast that false narrative that they presented to the world that billions of people watched versus what was actually happening with the invasion of Ukraine. What a macabre, macabre crime uh, Russia created with that false history. So the famine commission that we fought for in 1984 and its final report provide the documentary evidence, but, not, but do not assume that it is being taught or that the majority of people uh, understand it. And that is why we fought so hard for the long overdue memorial to the victims of the Ukrainian famine located in Washington, D.C. And many of you were there for its uh, inauguration. And our former member, Congressman Sander Levin of Michigan, did so much work on that along with the U.S. Ukraine Foundation and so many other groups. So today our world faces a renewed threat and this uh, broadcast today must help to ensure that the American people and our partners in places like Africa, who often stand to face the biggest impacts of the lost access to Ukraine's grain, understand the history of Russia's weaponization of food. And for the American people, if we see food prices rise, I'm surrounded by grain elevators here in the northern part of Ohio in our ninth district, uh, which is a major grain producing region for the world. Uh, but I would have to say that what will happen with world prices now will be impacted so heavily uh, by what is occurring in Ukraine and by Russia's destruction of grain and blockade of the shipments out of Ukraine. The American people and the people of the world have to be educated to understand why this is happening and the voices aren't as loud as they need to be from that part of the world. So. Um, I can just tell end this small story for our own family. Our maternal grandparents came from an area that is today located in Ukraine. It was then part of a Polish exodus. It was part of Tsarist Russia, actually. And they came here because the Bolsheviks were beginning to tell people, the uh, penniless peasants, that um, they couldn't graze their one uh, cow on open pasture. They had no way to feed themselves. And so they came to America to earn money to go back, right? To buy land, to be able to be uh, uh, free farmers, to be able to raise their family. And that was impossible. So I am one of the survivors of that historical legacy. But when I tell people the story who are Americans and have been raised in a very sheltered environment, they simply listen and they can't conceive of how that could happen. So I wanted to put that on the record today and to hope that there will be a moment next spring when uh, we as the free world can help the women of Ukraine plant the fields, plant the gardens, help to restore the food systems of Ukraine as uh, Ukraine works to win this war and we all support her. Thank you so very much.